It's going to change. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Keep on holding on.
Give my hand as they go away, man. servant depart in peace according to your word for mine eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all peoples a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles all right. and the glory of your people Israel Amen Amen. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and also to the hearing of his word. I'm just going to preach just for a little while. I know some of us have lost loved ones. I know that some of us have memories that hold us back around Christmas time. I know some folk that that uh, 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 the holiday has lost its luster because they don't have what they used to have can't give like they used to give, can't decorate like they used to decorate. Amen? Amen. And I just want to preach just for a little while for those of us that might have a little bit of a problem around the holidays. A blue Christmas. <laughs> All right. A blue Christmas. Pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask right now that you Enter this place and dwell with us in the form of your precious Holy Spirit. Lord, move among your people and have thine own way. Lord, open the hearts and open the minds of this waiting congregation that they might receive the word you have given unto your servant. Lord, I furthermore request that you would take me and hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that they might not see me but Christ in me. Bless somebody's soul. Cleanse and make them whole. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And amen. amen. A blue Christmas. You know, blue is a very popular color. And as a matter of fact, blue is one of my favorite colors. All right. <laughs> I have more blue in my wardrobe than any other color. Amen. If uh, you're ever looking for uh, uh, to give a gift to me, <laughs> buy something for me. Blue All right. is probably a safe bet. Okay. Amen. Now some folk or like me, they they like blue. All right. Blue makes you feel good. But there are other folk that like red. Mm -hmm. And you'll see them with red shoes, red suits. <laughs> uh, 
I like a little red, but too much of it makes me feel uncomfortable. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah, too much of it uh, makes me feel a little edgy. Amen? So I can't wear but so much red at one time. Amen? What do you think of when you think of the color blue? Most people think of majesty, business, power. Go, we used to seeing people in blue pinstripe suits taking care of business and running the country and, uh, and politicians and people of power uh, wearing blue. Blue is associated with stability, loyalty, wisdom, faith, and truth. Did you know that? To many people, though, blue represents hopelessness. That's why blue is an odd color at Christmas time. And if you hadn't noticed, if you look around, there's not many trees that are decorated with blue. But it's the way many people feel at Christmas time. Unless they can remove themselves from their own expectations and see the shadow of the cross over that crib. I'm telling you, unless you can see the shadow of the cross on that crib, all you're going to see is tragedy and sadness. A woman named Diane Hicks wrote that without hope, this is what hopeless people see at Christmas time. For the hopeless, if you think about Christmas, it's the story of a teenage girl that's got knocked up by somebody that's not her husband. If you're hopeless, you're going to see a child born in some dirty stall somewhere. If you're hopeless, it's going to be the story of innocent boys that were killed by this guy named King Herod because he thought that one of them was going to be the promised uh, Messiah. If you're hopeless, it's the story of somebody that was sent into the world in peace who died a tragic and painful death. If you're hopeless, it's going to be the story of a light that was sent to shine in darkness, but it got snuffed out way too soon. If you're hopeless, that's what you're going to see. If you're hopeless, you're going to see the story of God's never-ending self giving mercy rejected and condemned Talk about it, if you're hopeless. Yes, no. Hope. If that's all that anybody sees in this Christmas story, then indeed Christmas is definitely going to be blue for you. If all you looked at were the things that were wrong about the birth of Christ, that's all you're going to see is a blue, blue Christmas with no hope and no joy. <coughs> but this man that is written about here named Simeon, he didn't see it that way. He gave a prophecy that was filled with bad news. But he also had some uplifting words. Let's listen to what he said. He said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So in the blue, he saw some light. In the difficulties that, that, that were going on and surrounding the people, he saw a reason to hope. He said, and I quote, mine eyes have seen your salvation. Yes, sir. In the blue situations, it's hard to see light. I mean, there's some folk in here right now that's blue. Mm -hmm. Amen? But some of you, that's the only reason why you came here. Because you blue. You don't come around the church when things are going good for you. But you come when you get blue. When somebody die on you, then you want to make your way to the church. When you lose your job, you make your way to the church. 
when you get a new job, uh, you start making some good money, you don't have no reason to come to the church. Everything going good for you, but when you get blue, then you want to see some light. Amen? Mary and Martha, there, there was a, there was, there, there, there was, there, there, there was a, two sisters named Mary and Martha, and they were so blue that it was hard for them to see the light. And Jesus came, and, and and they blamed him, saying, "If you had been here, our brother would not have died." Right. In a way, that that, that that they they question, like many of us do, the the advantage. Of personally knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. Didn't seem like they were benefiting from his relationship. All they saw was the blue. Amen. But Jesus helped them to see the light. Amen. He came and still brought the man back to life. Y'all hear what I'm talking about today? Amen. And that's how some of us are. We so busy looking at the blue in our life that we can't see the light in our life that Jesus gives us. We're so busy focused on what we don't have that we can't praise God for what we do have. Y'all don't, don't hear what I'm talking about today. But it's not uncommon. Even Christ himself, he, he, got, he got hit with it there on the cross. He said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? But then he came to his senses and said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Not what they do. It's odd, but we usually see blue when we get to hurt. Am I right? We rarely see blue when all things are going right and when God is blessing us. We don't see no blue then. Amen? We rarely... Hear anybody ask God, Lord, why, why are you blessing me like you're blessing me? Mm -hmm. Lord, why are you putting food on my table? Why are you putting clothes on my back? You got to stop doing me the way you're doing. But when something, one thing goes wrong in your life, after a thousand things, God has blessed you rightly. All of a sudden, you want to get blue on the Lord. Yes, sir. All the time that you spent with mama and she finally died at an old age and you want to get mad with the Lord. Mm -hmm. After all the blessings that God has provided you and all the things that God has given you, amen, you, you lose one job and you want to, you want to get blue on the Lord. Amen. 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 And uh, uh, I'm telling you, God is in the light, yes. even in your blue time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when I look at this text, I see a man named Simeon. And Simeon saw the salvation of the Lord mm -hmm. in a gloomy and sad situation. Yes, sir. What Simeon saw was the same hope that Joseph and Mary saw despite the frustration of a pregnancy before a formal marriage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Uh, Matthew Henry, the great commentator, said that Joseph and Mary marveled at the things which were spoken of this child. And Simeon, he did likewise. What reason did they have to rejoice? What reason did they have to be joyful? Things were going wrong in their life. Things didn't look well in their lives. Their reputation was destroyed. Simeon was on the verge of death. But the secret good affections in the minds of some is going to be revealed by how you embrace Christ. See, some of y'all are going to be sad every single Christmas. <laughs> Every single Christmas for almost the rest of your life till you get to a certain age. Some of you know, after you get to a certain age, you don't worry about that stuff. Somebody know what I'm talking about today. After you get to a certain age, you ain't focusing on all that. Amen. 
Uh, you ain't focusing on air, what, what, air, what you go get people and what you can't get people and who's here and who's not here. At a certain point in your life, Christmas is just Christmas. Amen? Amen. You don't worry about what toys you can't buy for somebody and, and what things you can't get for somebody. Amen? Christmas is just Christmas. If I give you a Christmas card with a dollar, you better appreciate it. Amen? <laughs> all right, all right. Amen? Amen. But that's when you get to a certain age. But for some of you, for a long time in your life, and some of you that are even older, you haven't gotten a lesson yet in your head, you're going to be blue every single Christmas. Because you're focusing on the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. Uh, Simeon's words are called the nuns-dimitis. Amen? Amen? And it's from two words in the Latin translation uh, uh, uh of how it begins. And Simeon sees his death coming, basically. He's dying. But he's not sad. He's not dismayed. He's not worried. Because uh, he understood the purpose for which God had kept him alive as long as he did. And when you've fulfilled God's purpose for your life, it's a lot easier to let this life go. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. Uh, sometimes it's hard to let it go because you haven't completed what it was uh, that you were assigned to do. But he didn't have blueness in mind even though he knew he was going to go because he said he had been promised to see the salvation of the Lord. And right before he died, he saw the baby Jesus. Yes, sir. In a sense... Simeon is like some of us that that see that breakthrough in the morning. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You've been sick for a while and you rustled all through the night and you tossed and you turned and you sweated and you had fevers, but you see the dawn break. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You see the dawn breaking on your money issues. Amen. You've been in debt. You've been down. You've been broke. And all of a sudden you see the dawn breaking. Thank you. And the darkness, the blueness is going away. Just about got your credit right. Just about got everything straightened out. The light is coming out of the blue. And he could only say those words that he said because he had seen Christ. And that is the truth that I want you to understand. If you don't take anything else with you today, it's because he had seen Christ. The truth is that many of us are only happy today. We only have joy today because we experienced the Lord. Amen? Amen? And we satisfied today because we've experienced the Lord. We don't live where we want to live. We don't drive what we want to drive. When we look in our pocket, we don't see what we want to see. But because we know the Lord, I still, I still have joy. Hallelujah. Christmas ain't going to be blue for me. All right, all right. I can't buy no big bow and, 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 and buy nobody a brand new car to sit outside. Uh, I can't even get nobody a brand new model car. But it's not going to be a blue Christmas for me. Amen. Scripture tells me that those who experience Christ are richer than those who haven't experienced Christ. Matter of fact, it says that those of us that have experienced the Lord are are not only richer, but those that have not experienced the Lord are the real losers in life, no matter how it looks. All right. I know it might look like the drug dealer on the corner is making out better than you, but I'm telling you, the Bible tells me that they're the real losers and you Amen. are the real winners. Yes. It might look that those that do and say and, and uh, sleep with and yeah. go no, with... Good. Hey, Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. Might look like they making out better than you, but the Bible says that you're the winner and they're the real loser. Amen. And and initially the state of, 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 of Simeon's condition was that he was old and he was dying. 
Somebody know what I'm talking about. Some of us feel like that every day. When we wake up in the morning, we feel like, hey, wow, I made it to another day. <laughs> I made it to another day. I thought, <laughs> I feel like yesterday I felt old and dying, but I woke up this morning one more time with my mind stayed on Jesus. That's that's enough right there to make somebody happy. Amen. That's enough right there to make somebody shout. When you when you're young, you don't think about that thing. You just wake up and wipe your eyes and jump up out the bed. But when you're old and you know that you y'all don't hear what I'm talking about, you don't have no reason to be blue if you saw another day. Amen. That was Simeon's condition. He was old and he was dying. It was definitely a blue moment for him. But because he saw the Lord, he got the joy of the Lord. And that gave him hope. Not so much for him, because he knew he was dying. But for the world that was going to come after him. After a while, you're not so much worried about your life. You done lived a long life. You had your opportunity. You've made your mistakes. But when you look down at your children, or when you look down at your grandchildren, you just want to make sure that we don't mess the world up for them. Am I right about it? We want to make sure that we get them off to a good start. But one of the things I want to let you know today is a little bit about this word uh, that you've seen on churches and in different places all over uh, called Shiloh. Amen? Amen. You got Shiloh Baptist Church, Shiloh Amen. Missionary Baptist Church, and Shiloh Worship Center. Amen? Amen. And where that comes from is between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there was a period of darkness. Now, darkness would not be subside until the coming of Shiloh. And Shiloh basically means the word of hope. Y'all got me? So when you see Shiloh, the Shiloh church, that means the word of hope. Church. Amen? Amen. So Shiloh was a message from God. And it had been 490 years since the last time that the people had heard a word from the Lord. There had been no good words. There had been no bad words. There had been no angry words. There had just been complete silence. The prophets didn't have anything. Amen? There were pr pronouncements and there were encouragements. Uh, but... There was nothing else that they could say that came from the Lord. So for 490 years, there was silence. It was a frustrating period. But when the message from John the Baptist came and said that there was a Savior coming, the people saw this patch of blue that could change their situation. And when Shiloh came, the silence was broken. Y'all got me? So Jesus was both the message and the messenger. Right. Are y'all going to hang with me today? Right. Y'all heard John say it. John said, in the beginning was the Word. Yes, sir. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus was the message, and he was also the messenger. Y'all hang with me? And when the Word became flesh, the message became the messenger. Y'all got me? Amen. Yes. Amen. And, and, and when we struggle to deal with the everyday blues mm -hmm. that trouble us all the time, yeah. you want to hear a word. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because you know that Shiloh comes. Right. You know that because you've heard a word from the Lord. Amen. You've heard a word that changed your heart. You heard a word that spoke to your situation. Everybody uh, experienced Shiloh before in their life. 
If you hadn't, you wouldn't be sitting here right now. Amen? Amen. If somebody hadn't spoke a word into your life that touched you, if somebody hadn't spoke a word that moved in your life, Amen. if you hadn't had a Shiloh from the Lord, you wouldn't be here right now. Am I right about it? Because when, when, when Shiloh comes, you get direction. When Shiloh comes, you, you, you get you, you, you know what decision to make. When Shiloh comes, you the doubts that you have, they move out the way. When Shiloh comes, uh, you will move on the altar of your spirit and motivate yourself to keep on going when Shiloh comes. Sometimes all you need is Shiloh to come to tell you that you can make it one more day. Uh, all you need is Shiloh to come to tell you that, you know what, I ain't going to let them do me like they do doing. Yeah. Sometimes Shiloh will come and you'll get strength to make it through your illness. Shiloh will come and your healing will come along with it. Amen. When Shiloh comes, you might be surrounded by darkness, but you still see the break of day. Amen. Amen. A patch of blue. Will bring, will, will shine right through that thing. Yes. Amen? Yes, Amen. I want you to know today, for those of you that are blue, Christ can bring you hope. Yes. Right. Amen. As I said, a lot of us are going into the Christmas season right. with the blues. Mm. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Some of us singing the blues. I ain't got nobody. <laughs> Amen? Y'all singing the blues going into Christmas. But you find hope in the world. And hope in your own situation. Everything is not a total loss when you focus on Jesus Christ. In Bethlehem, Mary, it is said, delivered a baby that she named Jesus in a state. Y'all remember the story? But the fact is, she didn't deliver a baby. She brought forth a baby. Amen? And, and the Bible says she brought forth a baby. It didn't say she delivered a baby. And that's significant to us because... In a greater sense, Jesus comes into your life mm -hmm. to inspire you, yes. to motivate you, mm -hmm. and pushes you to bring forth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. There have been a lot of people in, 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 in life who have testified that they would have given up their dreams. Mm -hmm. They would have threw in the towel. Yes. They would have just let it go, but the power of God in you encourage you to bring forth Amen. and the only reason you would need to bring forth something is because it's hidden or it's latent inside of you Amen. Come on. to bring forth what is within you already but has not been realized y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today when you met Jesus, you started doing things you never thought you come could on, do. Come on. You started doing things you didn't even know you could do. Yeah. Right. Somebody started singing songs they didn't even know they could sing. Somebody right. started doing work they didn't even know they could do. Somebody started feeding people. Somebody started ministering to people. Somebody started serving in the church. You didn't even know you had that in you. and It was already in you, but when you met Jesus, he had to bring it forth. When Jesus comes into your life, he helps you to bring forth your potential. He brings forth the courage in you. Some of y'all got up here, you were so scared. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. They told you you're going to serve the Lord in this ministry. You're going to serve the Lord in that ministry. And you were literally shaking because you were so scared. But Jesus gave you the courage. Yes, sir. Hebrews 13 and 6 says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do to me. When Jesus comes, there's a spirit of boldness that envelops you. We know 
that it can be done. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. I can tell somebody else it can be done now. Yes. If I could do it, y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. If I can do it with the schooling that I had, you can do it. If I can do it with the neighborhood that I came up in, you can do it. If I can do it uh, with the money that I don't have, if I can do it, but y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. If I can do it with the vocabulary that I don't have. If I can do it with the education that I don't have. If I can do it, you can do it. You can tell that somebody in here that can tell somebody that today. If I can minister, you can minister. If I can serve, you can serve. Amen. In the middle of the blues caused by the whispers and the stares and those people that turn are turned off by your relationship with Jesus, that baby inspires you. In the middle of the blues, caused by all the money you don't have. Down in Bethlehem, somebody found some joy. See, Jesus turns blues situations in the hope situation. Yes, Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. In the blackest night, mm. God shows you the light. Mm -hmm. When you had the blues, but God will show you the blue. Mm. There's a difference. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Mm. See, the blues sees the dark. But when God shows us the blue, Amen. He shows us that no matter how dark it is, He's still going to bring some light. Amen. That's why the scripture says that weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. In the night, when the warmth of the day is gone, and the chill falls over the earth. God is working to show you some blue. In the night when the birds stop chirping. And the crickets start to make their nocturnal symphony. God is working to show you some blue. In the night when the moon has made... The march across the sky. All right. All right. God is pulling back the black curtain. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank In the night when you're sick oh, thank and it you, seems Lord. like you're getting sick, thank you, Lord. Yeah. God is working to show you some blue. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah. In the night when you get afraid mm -hmm. and you start to lose hope, All right. God is working. To show you Whoa, some blue. You, Father, thank you, Lord. I want to let you know today. Thank you, Father. If blue represents hope and inspiration, oh, yes, Lord. then the birth of the Christ child was glad tidings. Yes. It was a sign of hope. Thank you, Lord. This was glad tidings for Israel because they had been enduring long, unbearable nights. Somebody know what I'm talking yes. about. Yes, they were second class citizens. No better than chattel. Mm -hmm. They were generally poor. Mm -hmm. What little they managed to save, they took it from them in taxes. Yes, sir. Oh. All right. Every time they tried to get free, every time they tried to get some peace of mind, they soul got covered by a blanket of darkness. Right. Yes, no. yes, it was a silence for 490 years. Yes, sir. But the birth of the Christ child was a sign that the night was getting ready to break. Yes. They were able to see far beyond the darkness. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? Yes. If you're in here today, then you ought to be able to look past the darkness. You ought to be able to look past the clouds and look to the rays of a new day and make up in your mind that I don't care what I'm going through. 
Hard times I've seen and the trouble that I've been through. Oh, yeah. It's still good to be here. Yeah. 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 It's still good to be alive. Yeah. I may not have everything that my heart desires. Oh, yeah. I may not be able to give everybody what I want to give them. I may not be in the best of health. My steps might be getting slow and my eyesight might be getting dim. Yes, yes, but I thank yes, the Lord for sparing my life for thank one more day. I can see blue. I can see the blue of Christmas. So praise Him for waking up this morning. I don't know about you, but I'm old enough that I can see blue of Christmas. Yes. So I praise him for putting clothes on my back. Yes. Yes. I can yes. see blue of Christmas. <laughs> so I praise him for giving me strength and giving me help. I heard a songwriter say, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Because of the king, I can see blue. I don't have the blues. But I can see blues. Last thing I want to leave you with. You got to think about the reason the Lord, the, the, the world celebrates the birth of the Christ child. It's because this child is a sign of hope that weeping might endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. The birth of Jesus Christ takes away the blues and gives me a reason to sing that I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. God has given the world a sign. He said this child shall be a sign that when the darkness covers the land, I can turn it in the light. This child will be a sign that even though there might be war all around us, that there is peace on earth and goodwill towards men. So I'm looking for a blue Christmas that although I might have some problems, I know God is going to make a way somehow. So I'm looking for a blue Christmas. This child is a special child. Isaiah 9 and 6 said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. This child is a sign that God is love. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Well, He did something for me. One evening on Calvary, the world saw a sign of God's love. The empty tomb was a sign that He rose from the grave. I don't need B.B. King to tell me that every day I have the blues. I already know that because I'm singing a new song. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every moment I can praise the Lord is all right with me. I don't have the blues, but I have hope. I can see blue. Every time I take a breath, I can see blue. Every time I open my eyes, I can see blue. When I look at my family, and my family circle has not been broken, I can see blue. I got a roof over my head. I can see blue. I got clothes on my back. I can see blue. I got a reasonable portion of health and strength. I can see blue. I will bless the Lord. No presence under the tree. I will bless the Lord. No money in my pocket. I will bless the Lord. I have a blue Christmas all by myself. 
If you don't praise him, let me praise him. <laughs> Ain't he all right? Is he all right? Is he all right? Hallelujah. I'm going to be blue. I'm going to have me a blue Christmas. Amen. Looking at the majesty of the Lord. I'm going to have a blue Christmas. I'm not going to have the blues. I done made up in my mind. No matter what I have. Or no matter what I don't have. I'm going to praise the Lord. For all that he's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. give me nothing. I'm still going to praise him. If I don't have nothing to give, I'm still going to praise him. Somebody ought to help me in here. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm not going to have the blues this, blues this Christmas. Yeah, I had loved ones that died right around the Christmas season, but I done made up in my mind, I'm not going to have the blues. The Lord has been too good to me for me to be moping around at Christmas time. I will bless the Lord. Moping around about some money that you don't have. Moping around because of what somebody didn't give you. You got to remember the reason for the season. Amen. Amen. Remember the reason for the season. Remember what I said earlier. Love weighs more than gold. Love weighs more than gold. I mean, if you have it and you want to spend it on the ones that you love, that's fine. But if you don't have it, concentrate on what you do have. Concentrate on what the Lord has blessed you with. Amen? And praise the Lord for that. Don't get the blues. Amen? It's Christmas time. But the song say, joy to the world, the Lord has come. That's what you should be joy, that's what you should be happy about. Not joy to the world because I got an iPhone X. Joy to the world because I got this, these shoes or I got this coat. Joy to the world because I got this or that. It's joy to the world, the Lord has come. Amen. Amen. Like, Stand to your feet. The doors of the church are open. All right. <coughs> Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let her receive his King. Let every heart. Heaven and nature Heaven and Listen, the doors to the church are open Listen, I don't know you, you I don't know if you You got a church home, you don't have a church home But listen, I'm offering you the opportunity to become part of this ministry and let it bless your life the way it's blessed so many others lives repeat the sounding joy repeat repeat joy to the world would it be one today that wants to join Jesus Let her receive her king. Would everyone today? Amen. You may be.
be seated in the presence of the Lord. And heaven. about the Lord is just not yourself don't let the blues get you down just think about God bring the blue light he brings joy Father God we come now at this appointed time and place we come now in action that through your son Jesus that you touch somebody's soul a heart this morning and touch them that they will have a, a, a heart of gladness Father, I ask that you touch uh, Susan Ruth and her condition or whatever the problem may be. Father, you 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 got all of whatever we need, you have it. Father, I ask that you touch all of us. Touch the sick that is among us. Touch those that are lost a loved one, like I lost my great-grandson. Father, I ask that you bless this daughter. Bless the father of that family, Father. I ask that you continue to bless my family, all families that are gathered here. But most of all, Father, let us have a joy for time in Christmas. Let it not be about a gift, by loving one another, Father. You said love way more than gold, Father. We ask that you continue to bless me. As we go this day, Father, we ask that let it all be about you and not about ourselves. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide, henceforth and now forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Go in peace.